Hi, everyone. Today, let's talk about the general stock market leading up into the CPI report. And then we'll briefly talk the China-Saudi Arabia trade deal. And then, boy, do we have some long-term charts to go over today. And then briefly, we'll go over my positions going into Monday. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this almost every day, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So the markets had a rough week. The Nasdaq was down about 3.5%, and we got CPI and a Fed meeting coming up on Tuesday and Wednesday, respectively. They mentioned that the stock market usually does well during Christmas. Usually you get a Santa Claus rally. The market is certainly not doing that due to high uncertainty on inflation data as well as the Fed decision. And they go over some charts showing how the markets have done here recently. Since the beginning of December, you can see TLT is actually down just a little bit here in December, despite the monstrous rally that it's had. It went into the month pretty rough, and then the rest of the major indices are down quite a bit, somewhere between 25 to 4% here for the NASDAQ. And then they go over the PPI data saying that it was a little bit higher than expected and not very promising. Again, we expect the CPI to be a little higher than expected and the markets are going to sell off. However, we do have to be careful because if CPI does come in lower than expected and it breaks with the PPI data, then we might see a little bit of a rally in the stock market. I don't think a low CPI number is going to change the 50 basis point hike that the Fed is going to do. I would think that it's more likely that CPI comes out a little bit high and there's potential that we see a 75 basis point hike. And if that happens, the market is going to sell off a lot and probably very quickly. He was a little bit dovish in his previous comments, but I would expect him to be about the same or maybe even a little bit more hawkish. And that really depends on the CPI data once again. I'm sure he'll mention the PPI data being higher than expectations. And him recognizing that is probably enough for the market to go down just in those comments. And then they mentioned the terminal rate. So, so futures are currently pricing in a terminal rate of just over 5% in the middle of next year. If the CPI data comes in higher than expectations, even if they go with the 50 basis point hike, they could raise the terminal rate, meaning that they're going to do more smaller hikes over time and that they could potentially look to keep those rates higher than they've mentioned in the past, higher for longer than they've mentioned in the past. So the main point here is, regardless of what CPI is, we do have to pay attention to the comments because even if they stick to 50 basis points and they stick with the terminal rate, they could still extend the timeline or they could raise the terminal rate and keep the same timeline and all of that would be bad for the stock market. Moving over to the China-Saudi Arabia trade deal, they came to a pretty solid agreement and it looks like they're going to be good trade partners going into the future, which is generally not good for America. The US and Saudi Arabia have had a pretty good relationship despite the fact that they generally do some pretty illegal things and have some pretty bad policy in terms of social justice and generally their culture. But in terms of what they came to an agreement on, you can see here they put out a joint statement saying that China is going to buy a lot of crude from Saudi Arabia. That's always the biggest thing. They mention here that it's a strategic partnership agreement with 12 agreements, including hydrogen, direct investment in their economic development, and of course, oil. It is interesting here that they mention joint cooperation to ensure the peaceful nature of Iran's nuclear program. This is obviously something that the United States and really the world is very interested in, but it is coming out here in a Saudi-China trade deal, so hopefully that's positive for the world. And then they mention here that Saudi-US energy interests have been diverging. The US wants OPEC to release more crude, and Saudi continues to pull back on their production in order to keep oil prices high. Obviously, China and the U.S. have been at odds in terms of trade. There's been a trade war ever since Donald Trump was president, and that continues today. China likes to steal a lot of technology, and we've been tamping down on that here recently. And we put in a policy where all Chinese companies listed in America have to release their information to the SEC. And that's another talking point that China does not like, and we're still waiting to see the results of that. So there's a couple of things that are outstanding between us and China, and it's definitely something that we need to pay attention to going forward. Moving over to the S&Ps on the monthly chart. It's always good to look at these longer term charts here at the end of the week. You can see so far we have not engulfed the previous month. We're getting pretty close and it's probably likely to happen before the end of December. If we do get that, then we should expect at least one more month of downward price action. Similar to what we saw here, we closed at the low of the month here in August after we had the highs and then we had another very strong month of downside. If this month engulfs the previous candle, then I would expect to come back down into this 3600 range at a minimum, which would be very close to the previous low on the S&Ps, but not taking it out at this time. In terms of momentum, you can see it is fading here slightly to the downside. 
We've had downward momentum ever since 1 March. It's highlighting here that the RSI is still ticking down and we have not gotten to oversold conditions. It's not super common to get to oversold conditions on the monthly chart. You have to go quite a ways back all the way to the great financial crisis to get oversold conditions on the monthly chart. But it is worth mentioning here on the RSI that it is still trending down and we're right at that 50 line. If we do break the 50 line, that's going to be a pretty good indicator that we're still moving down. Moving over to the weekly chart, you can see we had the gap down and then we closed right at the lows here. We are still sitting just above the 21 EMA here. Similar to what we had in August, stopped right at that level, and we gapped through it. It'll be interesting to see what we get at the open, but we do have CPI on Tuesday, so I don't expect to go very far on Monday. I'm sure we'll be in a holding pattern until we get to all of that data and the Fed meeting on Wednesday. Moving over to the NASDAQ, once again on the weekly chart, you can see we touched that next level of support down here at 278.90, 278 flat, somewhere in that zone. Came back up to the 50 line last week, and it looks like we're trending down here. So classic move on RSI, usually in a downtrend, you get a counter trend rally somewhere into that 50 range. And then I would expect it to sell off from there, which is exactly what we're getting. Again, expect a holding pattern on Monday, get CPI data. If it comes out a little bit hot, I'm sure it will push down. And then also expecting hawkish Fed comments if the CPI is high. So high CPI will definitely push the markets down, probably for two days in a row at least. Moving over to the Russell on the weekly chart, this looks very bad. Huge red candle, looks much weaker than the other major indices. You can see we got above the 50 mark here on RSI and we broke through it once again last week. So this definitely looks like a sell-off, looks like it's going to continue and you should expect that this is going to move all the way back down to the lows, at least in my opinion. Again, pending CPI. CPI could come back great and the markets take off from here, but right now the technical picture is very negative. Moving over to IYT on the weekly chart, you can see very negative, got below the 21 EMA, almost retested the nine. I would expect to move through that next week. You can see momentum is starting to fade here. Got our first reduction in momentum. RSI is ticking right through that 50 line. If we get any more downward movement, I would expect that to continue. And then oversold conditions here on transportation would be a good indicator that we might move slightly higher here. You can see in May, we got oversold condition. Then we retested oversold conditions here on the June low. So we had lower price action, but the same RSI reading. And then at that point, we did get that move back up to the August high. It's worth mentioning here, we did not get oversold conditions here on the September, October low before we did move a little bit higher. So it's interesting that we had lower price action previous low but RSI was slightly higher, indicating that this could be a little bit more permanent bottom. Just depends on how we come into this level and what the CPI reading is. Moving over to XLP, consumer staples, weekly close was below the open of the previous week just by a little bit. So this does look negative. Looks like we're going to come back into this 9 EMA at least somewhere around 73.50. Probably not all in one week. That would be a pretty big move for consumer staples unless CPI really pushes it down aggressively. But regardless of what we get next week, I would expect that to come into contact with the 9 EMA. Should open somewhere around 74 next week. And that's definitely within striking distance, maybe in one week, maybe two weeks. Just depends on if we hit it and we hold for a little bit, somewhere in this 74 range. Maybe it closes the week at that point and then we get a continuation down next week the week after that. Moving over to XOP, on the weekly chart, it does look a little bit more bullish, a little bit more like a buying opportunity here on the weekly chart. We did get the cross below the 50 line here on RSI on the weekly chart, and we do have negative momentum here. So you could certainly expect a little bit more negative momentum over the next two weeks or so. But it wouldn't shock me if we got a little bit of a bounce into Monday, maybe back into this 137.45 area. And then I would expect that to continue down again, depending on CPI. We also did get the cross here on the MACD, so definitely looking negative. We haven't had an oversold condition here on the weekly chart for XOP for a while. Of course, it's been in a little bit of a bull rally here going all the way back to 12 October of 2020. So it's been a rally for quite a while here. And it seems to me like this is going to push us back into those oversold conditions. Of course, we're going to find some support at these previous lows. But then we have the 144 EMA sitting all the way down here at $92.40. And that certainly is not too far from where we are now and could be a decent price target for a short. Moving over to XLK, the technology sector. On the weekly chart, for some context, we have the high pre-COVID. We have the lows here at the 144 EMA. The big rally, we got the sell-off and the cross right here in February of 2022. And since then, we've been selling off. We did come down and test the 9 EMA here. 
getting back below the 21. We did engulf the previous candle. It did show a little bit of support into the end of the week. It's not as weak as the S&Ps or the NASDAQ. Of course, we have momentum here fading. And again, getting the cross of the 50 here on the RSI still looks weak. This resistance line here held. So of course, we still have to expect downward price action, even if it looks a little bit more bullish. Moving over to stocks above their 50-day moving average on the weekly chart. Not good here. We had three weeks of stall. And then we got the big move down. I would expect this to come down a little bit more next week, at least to the 9 EMA. And then I would expect some choppy price action at the EMAs here. And then the continuation down is likely. Of course, CPI could push us all the way through all of those in one fell swoop, just because that's the power of the FOMC and the CPI readings right now. But of course, this still looks negative along with everything else. Moving over to the NASDAQ divided by the S&Ps. It actually kind of looks like we might have bottomed on this chart already. We did get oversold conditions and we've been moving sideways here. Got slightly above the previous resistance. It's now acting as support here. Of course, we have the 9 EMA coming down. It could certainly push this lower again based on CPI and the FOMC. But interestingly enough right now, but interestingly right now, the S&Ps and the NASDAQ are kind of neutral to each other. Moving over to gold, very bullish here recently. Looks like we hit some resistance. We did come all the way down and chest support. Wouldn't surprise me if we double tested support here just because of how extended we were. We see the RSI come back into the 50 line and then bounce higher from there. That would be a good trade. Momentum is still very bullish here and it certainly could push higher moving into next week. A little bit hard to trade that if it does just rally from here. The better trade would have been buying closer to 164 like we had the opportunity to do this week. I don't usually trade gold and I don't watch it that closely, but it is interesting to see that it is rallying here off the lows and it seems to have some solid support in that 151 area. Moving over to the dollar on the weekly chart, you can see the week was slightly positive, not very positive. We still have 104.50 holding. Again, based on CPI and FOMC, this certainly seems like it could rally and retrace back up into this 108 area. If it does do that, of course, that would be an area of resistance and could potentially turn down from there. But even during that rally, the markets will likely move down quite a bit. And I would expect just about everything to sell off, bonds included. Jump down to the daily chart here briefly and just show that we've been getting into these oversold conditions or very close to oversold conditions on the daily chart for a while here. Support holding here. And again, I would expect this to move slightly higher as the markets continue to trend down. Moving over to JNK on the weekly chart. This doesn't look quite as weak. Continues to find support in this 9 EMA area. And momentum is still bullish here. RSI did hit that 50 line and is ticking down here slightly here recently. If this does sell off and we get weaker momentum to the upside next week, then I would expect this to sell off over the next few weeks all the way back down to the previous low in that 86.50, 86.80 area. But for right now where it is, it is still neutral to slightly bullish. It wasn't quite as aggressive as a rally that we saw in August. It's worth mentioning that there's been quite a bit of chop and it looks more like an accumulation style rally. And there's certainly potential that we find support at $89 or maybe down here at $88, somewhere in this zone. And then we kind of bounce sideways or slightly bullish from there. Moving over to TLT on the weekly chart, you can see we have that big spinning top. Definitely seems like we're going to move down. You can see here we touched that 50 level. We're starting to move down here slightly. Wouldn't surprise me if we came back and retest this 9 EMA, maybe a little bit of support in here at 103, somewhere in this zone, expect it to move down slightly. Based on CPI, everything could sell off, including bonds. You know, bonds have obviously done pretty well here recently, but high CPI is going to make everything sell off in my opinion. Moving over to the VIX on the weekly chart, you can see the structure that we've had here recently, still pretty bullish. We do have a decent top in at about 35. And it does seem to be decreasing here slightly until we had this little bump here in October. There's certainly potential that we come up into this zone and find some resistance. But again, if CPI is aggressive, it will push right through this and you could expect it to move all the way back up into this 35 zone, in my opinion. And once again, looking for the cross of the 50 line from the lows, momentum is starting to fade here to the downside, as you would expect on the big green bar that we had last week. Again, expect to retest resistance, get into this 25 zone pretty much regardless of CPI in my opinion. But again, if CPI comes out high and the FOMC comes out hawkish, you should expect this to move much higher and potentially back into this 35 area. Moving over into my positions, obviously they have not changed since my Friday video. I'm still short 200 shares. I still have two covered puts. Then I have one call spread short in my IRA. Most of these are at max profit already, so I'm not expecting to make a ton of money on Monday. And I will likely close all of these positions going into CPI. 
that was a ton of information and a ton of different charts. Hopefully you got something out of that. Definitely comment down below if you learned something and like and subscribe if you got any value out of the video as a whole. And make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.